Hello there, very warm welcome and welcome to the news tonight. I'm Tulshi and in the next 30 minutes I'll be getting you through the day's top stories. Let's start with the headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi holds delegation level talks with visiting Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak. Delegation level talks to focus on bilateral relations between the two nations. Enforcement Directorate launches major crackdown on shell companies indulging in large-scale money laundering, conducts searches against 300 such firms across 16 states. Aam Aadmi Party Chief Arvind Kejriwal in Congress leaders' delegation meet Chief Election Commissioner Naseem Zaidi over complaints of EVM machine tampering, demand the use of ballot paper for elections. And Finance Minister Arun Jaitley highlights the challenges facing emerging markets, expresses hope that Indian economy is on course to grow at 7.7% in 2008. Well, let's start with that. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley today said that emerging markets are facing newer challenges in the form of protectionism and geopolitical tensions. Speaking at the second annual meeting of the BRICS New Development Bank meet, Jaitley said that India could grow at 7.7% in 2018. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley on Saturday underscored the challenges facing emerging markets. He listed among them inward-looking policies of protectionism of some countries, global financial condition, economic policies of the United States, and increased geopolitical tension. There are newer challenges, most notably a possible shift towards inward-looking policy platforms and protectionism, a sharper-than-expected tightening of the global financing con financial condition that could in interact with the balance sheet weaknesses in parts of the euro area and increased geopolitical tensions, including unpredictable economic policies in the United States. On economic growth, the finance minister explained that global growth is expected to improve further in 2017 and 18. Striking a positive note, he said the Indian economy is expected to grow at 7.2% in 2017 and 7.7% 7 .7 in 2018. Throughout this challenging time, India has remained as a bright spot amongst the major economies. As per the IMF's assessment in January 2017, India's growth in 2016 would be 6.6% and is projected to grow at 7.2% and 7.7% in 2017 and 2018. We have successfully implemented a slew of reform measures, including one of the largest currency reform initiatives ever implemented, which will move the Indian economy to a less cash trajectory, increase tax compliances, and reduce the threat from counterfeit currency. Jaitley also emphasized the significance of the new development bank that was set up by the emerging nations, India, China, Brazil, Russia, and South Africa. He revealed that India sought loans worth 2 billion US dollars for various projects, while needing funding worth 646 billion US dollars for infrastructural development in the next five years. Panchanan Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Celebrating 60 years of diplomatic ties, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak signed seven agreements in various fields today. The Malaysian Prime Minister is on a six-day visit to the country. Here are more details. India and Malaysia signed six MOUs and an agreement that paves way for further economic growth between the two countries on Saturday. Among the prominent MOUs is the proposed development of a urea and ammonia manufacturing plant in Malaysia. Both countries also signed a bilateral air services agreement to enhance air connectivity. The agreements were signed in the presence of visiting Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak and Narendra Modi at the Hyderabad House in Delhi. Both sides issued a joint statement after the bilateral meeting that agreed to explore the possibility of enhancing cooperation in the financial sector. Prime Minister Najib and I took stock of the full range of our cultural, economic and strategic engagement in countering radicalization and terrorism 
is an inspiration for the entire region. Our wide-ranging defense partnership has already brought our armed forces closer. A defense and strategic partnership will be very important for us to fight global terrorism. Uh, we need a fresh free trade agreement. Earlier, Razak was accorded a ceremonial welcome at the Rashtrapati Bhavan, where he was received by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Razak called on President Pranam Mukherjee and met Indian Vice President Mohammed Hamid Ansari and Foreign Minister Shushma Swaraj. Razak, who arrived on Thursday, is in India on a six-day visit that will focus on improving bilateral relations between the two nations. He also met Tamil superstar Rajnikanth in Chennai on Friday. Akhilesh Suman's report for Rajya Sabha TV. All right, Akhilesh Suman is in fact joining us now from the capital for more on this. Uh, Akhilesh, uh, you give us in fact uh, some of the salient points of uh, what really we saw today and how crucial it is. We are of course talking about how the 60-year-old relationship, you know, the dynamics of it uh, and today's MOUs, how crucial that is. Yeah, actually, you see, Tracy, what is most important for us, uh, rather for India, in this whole uh, Asia-Pacific region is to create goodwill as far as possible among the Southeast Asian neighbors. So he, I, I think that Prime Minister Nenel Modi, when he went to Malaysia in 2015, he created enough uh, ground for cohesion between Indian and Malaysian point of view. And politically, they came to, together on the issues, certain issues like terrorism that has been uh, aggravated uh, by uh, the influence of uh, radicalization in, far, uh, in Pakistan and western side of Pakistan in the whole Middle East. So Malaysia being a very developed country in a way, in, in Asian countries, Malaysia knows that how to build uh, uh, infrastructure products in least possible time. And India is one of the countries which is needing uh, such type of infrastructure projects, uh, projects inside the country. So it is a win-win situation for both Malaysians and Indians so that uh, they can invest, they can invest technological, they can invest uh, money, they can invest the whole uh, gamut of uh, instruments so that our infrastructure sector can be built. But more than that, there is an issue of radicalization that has been uh, hampering the growth in all uh, South Asia and Southeast Asian regions. And that is what uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and uh, Prime Minister Jack also told that de-radicalization was an experiment that was adopted in Malaysia years ago and Malaysians have been very successful in isolating the common Muslim youth from the deadly terrorist organizations. And uh, when Prime Minister talked uh, to uh, um, Prime Minister Razak, he, uh, he gave him, a, gifted him rather a guidebook how to de-radicalize the Muslim youth uh, from going into the hands of terrorists. So it will be a good uh, use for India. India becoming the second largest Muslim population in the world, India might be using such type of guidelines so that uh, uh, programs and policies as well as, as, uh, as uh, the persuasion of the people who are coming from the Muslim uh, families can see the better light of the day. And that is what uh, Prime Minister Rajak was telling that uh, Malaysia has uh, experimented it very efficiently. So uh, in coming, uh, I think in coming months, uh, India and Malaysia will also hold a conference, international conference on this radicalization process and how to de-radicalize because you know you know in the world everywhere people are telling that uh, fight the terrorism and only military solution is being given but what can be the non-military solution so that uh, uh, the common youth the normal muslim youth who are misguided and who, who go into the terrorism that is a very good cooperation between india and malaysia tracy and one other very uh, good uh, initiative that has been taken by both the countries to recognize the digital you know, the uh, India and Russia had been very good friends, but still they don't recognize each other's degree. Yes. But Malaysia and India, even though uh, they have become friends a uh, very late period, they are going to recognize each other's degree, and this will enhance the uh, coming and going of our uh, uh, enterprising youth in Malaysia, and their youth in our country. They can work there, they can work, come here, we can go there. So, 
So yes. it is one of the major initiatives that has been taken by Prime Minister of both the countries. And in coming days, you know that uh, the way uh, Indians are getting their say, around 27 lakh Indians are there in Malaysia. Yes. And now in elections, they are having a say. So you can uh, understand that uh, if uh, Pakistan sees us going closer to Malaysia, there will be eyebrows in whole Pakistani uh, establishment that how India and Malaysia are cooperating. Mm -hmm. So it is, I think, that a uh, good point that uh, Prime Minister Nandan Modi has uh, got in this whole South Asian region, Tracy. All right, we'll leave it there for now, Kilesh. Thanks so much for joining us and highlighting really the relationship that India and Malaysia have. Pointing out, of course, it's a relationship that has uh, grown, in fact, only in the past recent years. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, like you're pointing out, the Indian community there is the largest ethnic community in Malaysia. So nonetheless, the relationship is going to be very crucial in the years to come. Meanwhile, let's uh, head on to more news from across the country. And three soldiers were injured when terrorists opened fire on an army convoy on the outskirts of Srinagar city today, just a day ahead of Prime Minister Modi's visit to Udhampur. Here are more details. Terrorists opened fire on an army convoy near the SKIMS hospital on the Parimpura Pantha Chowk bypass on Saturday, injuring three soldiers. In a repeat of the Badgam incident, stone pelters hampered army operations. According to the police, troops retaliated when the last vehicle was hit by bullets, forcing the militants to flee. Army ki convoy aari thi Baramula se, uski upar firing hui hai, aur us firing mein teen jawan injured hui hai, out of danger hai usar. Jitne bhi bache hai, isme involu hai, ham koshish karenge, jitna bhi hamse ban padega, ki in bachon se baat chit ki jaye, inko engage kiya jaye, inke kya masle hai, unko suna jaye. Minutes before the attack, gunshots were heard in the commercial hub of Lal Chowk in Srinagar, triggering panic. A high alert was sounded after reports of a masked man entering the CRPF camp, who later turned out to be a local mentally challenged person. There was some boy, I think he's mentally deranged. He tried to enter the Taj Hotel. He's, we are explaining who is he. Did you capture the boy? Yeah, he's with us, but there's nothing to panic. Okay. Was Thank you so much. He's a, we are just sustaining. I think he's a civilian. We are just sustaining. Now, right now, Resting, is... everything is normal. Meanwhile, a multi-tier security ring has been thrown around Udhampur ahead of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit on Sunday to inaugurate Asia's longest bi-directional tunnel. Security has also been tightened in view of a shutdown call given by Kashmiri separatists to protest the Prime Minister's visit. Troops along the international border and the line of control have also been put on high alert to check any infiltration. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. In a major crackdown on shell companies, the Enforcement Directorate on Saturday conducted searches against 300 such firms across 16 states. The raids were a part of the central government's action against shell companies indulging in large-scale money laundering. The searches were conducted on companies in Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, Bengaluru, Bhuvaneshwar, Kolkata and other metro cities. The ED already registered cases against several people on charges of running shell companies for laundering unaccounted money. The action is part of the mandate given to the ED under a special task force that was recently created by the government on the directions of the Prime Minister's office. Voicing concerns over alleged tampering of EVM machines, Ahmad Party Chief Arvind Kejriwal and a delegation of Congress leaders on Saturday met the Chief Election Commissioner, Naseem Zaidi, and called for a tamper-free election. Objecting to the use of EVM, senior Congress leader Digvijay Singh said that other countries are still using ballot papers for elections and how he does not trust EVMs. This comes after the Election Commission has sought a detailed report from district poll authorities in Bhind, Madhya Pradesh, based on media reports that an EVM machine dispensed slips of the BGP symbol alone during a demonstration exercise. The chief electoral officer there, however, denied the report, stating that a dummy exercise was being misrepresented. Earlier on Monday, Ahmad Party also approached the EC over alleged EVM tampering in Punjab and demanded that slips generated by VVPAT machines should be matched with the election result. Why do you know who is BJP and who is Congress? If the machine is giving all the votes to BJP, then it means that the machine has changed software in the machine. So the election commission says कि हमारी मशीन टेम्पर नहीं हो सकती हमारी चिप जो है उसको पढ़ा नहीं जा सकता उस पर लिखा नहीं जा सकता ये सरासर गलत है उस मशीन का सॉफ्टवेयर बदला गया है मशीन के सॉफ्टवेयर में ये डाला गया है कि भाई कोई भी वोट डाले कोई भी बटन दबाए बीजेपी को वोट पड़ेगा शंका के प्रश्न उठे हैं जहां वहां स्थापित राज्य शासन के द्वारा 
जिन ऑफिसर्स को वहां तैनात किया गया जिनकी संकल्पता प्रश्न चिन्ह पर है आज उनका भी उनके विरोध भी एक्शन लिया जाना चाहिए ताकि एक निष्पक्ष चुनाव अटेर में भिंड जिले में हम लोग संपन्न करा पाए हमारी विचारधारा है और हमारा निवेदन है हम ये आशा करते हैं कि चुनाव आयोग पूरी गंभीरता से हमारे निवेदन पर ध्यान आकर्षित करके एक्शन वहां जरूर लेंगे हमें ईवीएम मशीन जो जिसकी चिप विदेश से आयातित होती है उस पर भरोसा करने के लिए क्या बाध्यता है इसलिए मैं तो अडवाणी जी से लेकर मायावती जी से लेकर अरविंद केजरीवाल से लेकर सबके पक्ष में हूं कि ईवीएम मशीन से चुनाव देश में होना नहीं चाहिए और बैलेट पेपर के माध्यम से चुनाव होना चाहिए अगला चुनाव जो भी शायद गुजरात का या जहां का भी हो वहीं से प्रक्रिया तत्काल प्रारंभ कर देना चाहिए हमारी तो मांग ये है and i will keep you updated on those developments there meanwhile the new financial year begins from today and several new rules and regulations came into effect from today so here are a few of them first there will be a penalty on the cash payments of over 2 lakh rupees from today there will be charges for non maintenance of minimum balance in accounts also e filing of itr will start and the government has notified a simpler one page form for filing income tax returns personal income tax for people with the income in the slab of 2 and 1/2 lakhs to 5 lakhs will be reduced to 5% instead of 10%. Surcharge of 10% to be levied on individuals with income between 50 lakhs to 1 crore rupees. There will be a slew of commodities that will get costly and those that will get cheaper. So domestic RO water filter and its RO component, online railway tickets, solar powered equipments, the point of sale machine cards will be cheap, while health insurance, vehicle insurance, mobile phones manufactured in India, cigarettes chewing tobacco bds pan masala will get costlier also there'll be no stamping or tagging of hand baggage at seven major airports delhi metro smart cards however become non refundable moving on our growth of the country's eight core sectors slipped to an over one year low of 1% in february this year the slip was mainly due to a fall in output of crude oil natural gas refinery products fertilizers and cement The eight core sectors had expanded to 9.4% in February last year and 3.4% in January this year. According to the Commerce and Industry Ministry data, crude oil output contracted 3.4% in February this year, natural gas output shrank 1.7%, refinery products output fell by 2.3%, fertilizer declined at 5.3% and cement output dropped at 15.8% during the month. but coal and steel production recorded positive growth during the month with a quick break here up next we're getting international news stay with us existing antibiotics are becoming drug resistant this is where actually we have huge amount of opportunity to work on you can control the activity of telomerase you can actually control your clock of aging by the year 2050 two thirds of the people will be above 65 years watch you recall with professor shantanu bhattacharya director indian association for the cultivation of science kolkata only on rajya sabha television Welcome back. Let's continue getting you more national news. And uh, the prices of petrol and diesel have been slashed with effect from Friday midnight. In a first change in rates in two and a half months, price of petrol was cut by three rupees seventy-seven paise per liter, excluding state levies. While that of diesel was uh, cut by two point two point nine one liter. The reduction in prices comes with sharp fall in global rates. Indian Oil Corporation said that in a state in a statement, in fact, that the current level of international oil prices. and the rupee us dollar exchange rate warranted a decrease in the prices rates were last revised on the 16th of january when the price of petrol went up by 54 paise on that date diesel rates were hiked by 1 rupees 20 paise a liter 
The center today released over 2,000 crore rupees to Tamil Nadu for drought and cyclone relief. The measure comes after 19 days of protests by drought-hit farmers at Jantar Mantar. The amount includes over 1,700 crores from the National Disaster Response Fund for drought relief and 264 crore rupees for cyclonic storm Vardha. Earlier, DMK working president M.K. Stalin had met the protesting Tamil Nadu farmers at Jantar Mantar in the capital. He accused the BGP-led central government and Tamil Nadu government of apathy towards the drought-hit farmers. He demanded that Prime Minister Modi should waive off farmer loans as he promised in Uttar Pradesh during the recent assembly election campaigning. Leaders from Tamil Nadu cutting across political spectrum also offer their support to the state's farmers who have been protesting at Jantar Mantar for the past 19 days, demanding a drought relief package of 40,000 crore rupees from the centre and also that farm loan waiver. But they have given 1,712 crores, a meager amount for Tamil Nadu. It is not used for Tamil Nadu. It is a, a pathetic condition of Tamil Nadu. They have not realized the pathetic condition of Tamil Nadu because one crore acre was withered without water. For that, Tamil Nadu government demanded 21,798 crores. But they have not given a single paise for that. Representative on the floor of the house. We have met the finance minister, we have met the agriculture minister, but their uh, so replies are only consoling, but no solution is being brought. Prime Minister should uh, make some uh, efforts to reach out to the former representatives and uh, sort out the problems, because agriculture is in deep crisis, farmers are passing through unprecedented distress, and um, indebtedness is the primary cause for uh, suicides of uh, farmers across the country. And with that, let's take it through what else is making news across the country and nationwide. The Uttarakhand High Court has accorded the status of juristic persons to a wide range of natural entities. Following the order, these bodies will have some legal rights of a living person. The court also directed that all corresponding rights, duties, liabilities and rights, uh, rights in fact, akin to fundamental and legal rights of a living person be conferred to preserve and conserve them. The Apex Court also added that any harm caused to these bodies will be treated as being caused to human beings. President Pranam Mukherjee will pay a three-day visit to West Bengal, Jharkhand and Bihar. On the first day, he will attend the 52nd Convocation of IM Calcutta in Kolkata. On Sunday, he is scheduled to lay the foundation stone of Rabindra Bhavan and Hajj House in Ranchi. He will then visit the Vikram Shila University Monuments and Museum in Bihar on Monday and the Guru Shyam Charan Lahiri Peet. Five associate banks of SBI will merge with the parent bank starting today. 72 years after coming into being in Kerala, the State Bank of Travancore will merge with State Bank of India. Besides that, the State Bank of Bikaner and Jaipur, State Bank of Mysore, State Bank of Patiala and State Bank of Hyderabad will also be merged with SBI and the assets of these banks will be transferred to the parent bank. Indian Army Chief General Bipin Rawat is in Dhaka on his three-day visit to Bangladesh. The visit is taking place before Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's state visit to India when the countries are expected to intensify defence cooperation. General Rawat will also pay courtesy call to President M. Abdul Hamid. And now to what has come as a relief for India. The External Affairs Ministry has confirmed that a student who was allegedly brutally assaulted in Poland and was claimed to have died has survived the attack. The External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj spoke to the Indian Ambassador to Poland, Ajay Visarya, regarding uh, the assault on an Indian student in Poznan City whose name was not being disclosed. Swaraj has also sought a report from the envoy in the matter and is assured that the authorities concerned are inquiring into all aspects of the incident. Meanwhile, Ajay Visarya had earlier tweeted, and I quote, preliminary inquiry suggests the student attacked in Poznan tram on Wednesday. Thank God he survived getting details, unquote. Now, ahead of a meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping, Donald Trump described it as a very important interaction. Speaking to reporters, the U.S. president said that he will get down to some very serious business with China. The White House, however, said that the meeting with President Xi will be difficult as important issues of national security will come up, including South China Sea situation. 
The Chinese president is traveling to the United States to meet President Donald Trump uh, in Florida on the 6th and 7th of April. It will be the first meeting between the two world leaders amid heightened tensions between the world's two largest economies over issues including North Korea, the disputed South China Sea, Taiwan and trade. This morning we announced that the president will host President Xi of China at Mar-a-Lago on April 6th and 7th. The president looks forward to, met to meeting with President Xi and exchanging views on each other's respective priorities and to chart a way forward on a bilateral relationship between our two nations. They will discuss the issues of mutual concern, including North Korea, trade, and regional security. And now let's take you through some more international news updates in Global Buzz. U.S. President Donald Trump released details of the personal finances of many of his wealthy staffers, including senior advisor Steve Bannon. The disclosure also showed the incomes of Trump's inner circle in the 12 months preceding their engagement as government workers. Neither Trump nor Vice President Mike Pence's assets, though, were included in the document. Protesters set fire to Paraguay's Congress building after the Senate secretly voted for a constitutional amendment that allowed President Horacio Cartes to run for re-election. Firefighters managed to control the flames, but protests and riots continued in other parts of the country. Myanmar goes to polls today for the first time since Aung San Suu Kyi's party swept to power, uh, swept to power a year ago. The by-elections will fill 19 vacant seats in the national and regional parliaments. The by-election result is not expected to impact the balance of power for the ruling party as it continues to have a majority in parliament. In Australia, flooded rivers are rising in two states with two women dead and four people missing after torrential rain in the wake of a powerful tropical cyclone. The authorities have warned local residents to remain vigilant Residents in low-lying areas have been asked to leave. On to sports and PV Sindhu came a step closer towards her maiden Indian Open Super Series title on Saturday by defeating Sungji Hyun in a marathon women's single semi-final. Sindhu breached Sung's def defense to win 21-18, 14-21, 21-14 in a 76-minute match. The third-seeded Sindhu entered the finals to take on arch-rival and top-seeded Carolina Marin of Spain on Sunday. PV Sindhu has backed one title in 2017 so far, the Syed Modi International Grand Prix Gold, which she won in January. This gives a chance to win her a second crown of the year and the second Super Series tournament of her career after clinching the prestigious China Open Super Series premiere in November 2016. That's it on the news tonight. Thanks so much for joining us.